was my M1 in World War II. That might be the most frequently asked question about the Garand rifle, and the short answer is yes, probably. At least one part was. During the Second World War, the M1 famously fought its way from New Guinea to North Africa, from the Solomon Islands to Sicily, Normandy, Iwo Jima, and the last battle, Okinawa. Although it's generally not possible to know any details of a particular M1's World War II service history, it is easy to determine if an example even existed during the conflict. M1s made by Harrington and Richardson or International Harvester were produced in the 1950s, so you can rule them out straight away. Only Springfield Armory and Winchester Repeating Arms produced the M1 during the Second World War. But the matter is slightly more complicated than it sounds when you consider that Springfield also made the rifle during the 1950s. Springfield M1s with a serial number below 3,888,000 were made before September 1945 and were therefore part of wartime production. The overwhelming majority of World War II production M1s were put through service life extension overhauls at arsenals across the country after the war. This resulted in the replacement of stocks, barrels, rear sight assemblies, and other components. So today your World War II M1 probably doesn't look exactly like it did the day that it left the factory. That's why the average Garand you find at your local gun store will have a receiver that was produced during the war, but then it will have replacement wood, a post-war barrel, and the T-105E1 rear sight assembly, which wasn't implemented on production rifles until after 1945. M1s that are still equipped with wartime production lock bar type rear sights are uncommon in today's market and therefore more valuable. Among some M1 owners, there's a bit of an obsession with parts originality, and many collectors invest a great deal of time and money in the quest to return a rebuild M1 to its original factory parts configuration. Which is great if you have the resources to do it, but if you don't, there's something to be said for leaving the gun as is. Even if the only World War II part on it is its World War II dated receiver, that doesn't indicate that it is inferior or less historically significant in any way. In fact, that rifle has been in its rebuilt configuration far longer than it was in its original as-built configuration, so leaving it alone is actually preserving the rifle's history more than it would be if you pulled it apart in an effort to make it look the way that it did in 1945. That World War II receiver is the heart of the rifle, and regardless of when all of the other parts on it were made, the gun still has a connection to the history of the Second World War. And that's what makes it worth owning.